This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. Tonight, the Mizzou community is mourning after the body of a missing Mizzou student was found in a river near Vassville, Nashville, Tennessee. Riley Strain's body was found this morning about eight miles from downtown. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Ann Allred. Strain was found in the Cumberland River 14 days after he disappeared. Taking a live look from Nashville right now, Riley Strain's family is holding a news conference for the first time since that news broke. His family has been searching for him for weeks. Five on Your Side's Holden Kerwicki has been following this story and joins us in studio with the latest on the investigation. And Holden, what are police saying? What's the latest from them? Well, and Kelly, investigators were able to quickly ID Strain by his clothing and his Apple Watch, which matched video of the 22-year-old shortly after he was kicked out of a Nashville bar. National Metro Police say barge workers found Strain's body this morning while working to clear some debris in the river. This area where Strain was found is eight miles downstream of where police pinged his cell phone and the area where his wallet was found on the riverbank. Police say no foul play has ever been suspected. There's no other evidence that suggests anything other than uh, we have reports that uh, normally uh, under these circumstances with, with his height and weight that he could have surfaced between 14 and 20 days. Uh, this is the 14th day, uh, so we were uh, really expecting uh, anytime soon to, uh, to find him. As we mentioned, Riley Strain's family is holding a press conference right now in Nashville. I will have more on that coming up at 6 o'clock. Kelly. Thank you, Holden. Today, Missouri's Attorney General said he will launch an investigation after a fight that left a Hazelwood East student in a coma. 16-year-old Kaylee Gain is in critical condition and unconscious with a brain bleed and swelling. Video of the fight earlier this month shows another girl hitting her head onto the pavement near the high school. A 15-year-old girl is in juvenile custody charged with assault in the case. The investigation is looking at diversity, equity, and inclusion programs at the school and the district's relationship with police. The district paused its school resource officer program in 2021 after local police departments declined diversity and inclusion training. We reached out to the district who says it is committed to diversity initiatives, but says it does not prioritize those ex at the expense of students. Tonight, one person is dead after a fire in East St. Louis. Firefighters found the victim inside of a home. This is on North 25th Street. Happened this morning. Five on your side's Diamond Palmer is live near where that fire started. Diamond. Well, and the scene cleared here just before one this afternoon on North 25th Street. Illinois State Fire Marshal is the lead agency on this investigation of the fire. However, Illinois State Police is helping out with this investigation. And we've been on the scene since early this morning throughout the entire day, and there's been very few details to come out about this fire. But one new thing that we learned today is that an autopsy is planned for the person who died here. Now, neighbors across the street captured ring doorbell footage just before 430 this morning. You can see flames bursting out of the home and fire officials say the home was vacant at the time, but frequently had squatters. Police have confirmed one body was still inside of the home and one woman was able to escape. One man says he heard gunfire before he saw smoke and then he heard a woman screaming. Neighbors we spoke to this morning say they've repeatedly complained to the city about suspicious activity. They just in and out. So I took time to even put a board across the front door with a sign that says keep out. The city, it does its part. You know, they police have came out and did what they could do, but then they come right back. Now, detection dogs have been brought out to the scene today to help this investigation. And just this afternoon, I was able to talk on the phone with Illinois State Fire Marshal, who told us very honestly that this investigation could take a long time. Reporting live here in East St. Louis, Diamond Palmer, five on your side. Our weather first team is tracking a few spotty showers possible late tonight. Let's check in with meteorologist Jim Castillo. What's the word on this, Jim? Yeah, you know, some of us won't even notice it. You know, it's late evening where we have a chance of a sprinkle or light shower. And not a big deal on that. It's Monday and Monday night where some beneficial rain and over an inch of rain in some areas looking more likely. So more on that 
coming up in Maine weather. Right now it's cloudy. We did make it up to 68 today, close to 70, but with that cloud cover from time to time and held the temperature down 66 now and that humidity 33%. So not a lot of moisture to work with out there, but there's that little line of shower activity that we're watching and some sprinkles now entering Pike County around Bowling Green. So we'll watch that, but it's not snow until you get to Chicago. Chicago at O'Hare, 33 degrees with snow here at 66, so it could be worse. And that future cast showing that light shower activity or sprinkles all the way through the late evening hours into the metro, and then it moves on quickly to the east. So uh, real quickly, the weather headlines, that quick evening shower, otherwise freezing late tonight, guys. Much more on that and that rain, thunder, and windy on Monday in just a few minutes. New tonight, attorneys for Pam Hupp entered a second not guilty plea on her behalf today for the 2011 murder of Betsy Faria. Lincoln County prosecutors charged Hupp for the murder two years ago, but dismissed and refiled those charges. Our Christine Byers just got back to the newsroom from Troy. She's here to tell us what prosecutors had to say about why they dismissed the case and whether this means the trial will be delayed. Christine. Pam Hupp's defense attorneys asked for a change of venue two years ago, citing the extraordinary amount of media coverage there has been of this case, and they got one four hours away in Greene County. Lincoln County Prosecutor Mike Wood told me today that was a little bit too far for the trial to make sense for the state logistically. Russ Faria was originally convicted of his wife Betsy Faria's murder in 2013. He spent about three years in prison before a judge found him not guilty during a retrial in 2016. That same year, Hupp lured a man with intellectual disabilities to her O'Fallon home, shot him, and tried to stage it as self-defense. She accused that victim, Louis Gumpenberger, of being a hitman Russ Faria hired to kill her. She entered an Alford plea in that case. Lincoln County Prosecutor Mike Wood says there are now 50 plus witnesses he expects to testify against Hupp in Betsy Faria's murder trial, some of them from, Gumpen from the Gumpenberger case. But as we started to put our case together, uh, the voluminous amount of evidence that we would have and witnesses that were going to be involved in what we believe prospectively could be a, a month long trial, uh, being able to prosecute that from four hours away was just going to be more of a burden than I think uh, would have been studious or responsible for us to proceed on. Now, Wood tells me he doesn't believe refiling these charges will delay the trial, so it should still begin next summer. He says he hopes a judge will agree to move the trial within 100 miles of Lincoln County should the defense seek another change of venue this time around. In a few hours, IDOT will shut down part of two bridges in St. Louis. Starting at 9 tonight, IDOT will close eastbound Interstate 5564. Eastbound lanes on both the Poplar Street Bridge and Martin Luther King Bridge will close. Crews are only closing one direction at a time for patching and resurfacing. Lanes will reopen Monday morning. Work will continue only on weekends for the next six weeks. Tomorrow is the Missouri Democratic primary. Polls are open from 8 a.m. to noon tomorrow. Voters can show up to a voting center in person and cast their ballot. There are five candidates on the ballot besides President Joe Biden. The party will announce the final results sometime next week. This is the first presidential primary run by the party. To me, it's just such a part of America's DNA that, you know, we have an opportunity to show up and vote and be heard. Registered Republicans cannot vote in this primary since the GOP held its caucuses earlier this month. You can find our voter guide for tomorrow's primary and the upcoming Missouri municipal election. Just text the word GUIDE to 314-425-5355.